Intraaortic balloon pump. Intraaortic balloon pump is a device uh, which helps in improving uh, the cardiac output. So its indications are cardiogenic shock, uh, shock syndrome, threatening extensions of uh, MI, unstable angina, intractable ventricular dysrhythmia, septic shock, cardiac contusion, prophylactic support, and bridging devices to other mechanical assist devices support during uh, transportation. Contraindication for the use of intraaortic balloon pumps, they are absolute and relative contraindication. Absolute contraindications include aortic valve insufficiency, dissecting aortic aneurysm. Relative contraindications include end stage cardiomyopathies, severe uh, atherosclerosis, end stage terminal disease, abdominal aortic aneurysm, blood dyscrasias, and thrombocytopenia. The ventricles propel the blood throughout the pulmonary and systemic circulation as a result of ventricular con contraction. Fluid blood always flows from high pressure to low pressure. The cardiac cycle is divided into systole, the ventricular contraction, and diastole, the ventricular relaxation and filling. Preload refers to the amount of stretch on the ventricular myocardium prior to the contraction. The Starling law describes how an increase in the volume in the ventricle at the end of diastole results in an increase in the volume of blood pumped out. Preload is often referred as filling pressure. After load is the resistance to the ventricular ejection, which takes several forms. The mass of the blood that must be moved measured by the hematocrit. The higher the mass, uh, the more inertia that must be generated. The aortic and diastolic pressure, if the aortic and diastolic pressure is 80 millimeters of mercury, then the left ventricular must generate 81 millimeter in order to open the aortic valve and generate the blood flow. And then uh, we need to consider the arterial resistance. The intraaortic balloon pump is a flexible catheter and is inserted into the femoral artery and passed into the descending aorta. The correct positioning is critical in order to avoid the blocking of the subclavian, carotid, and renal arteries. When inflated, the balloon blocks 80 to 95 percent of aorta. Complete occlusion uh, would damage the walls of the aorta and also damage the red blood cells, cause hemolysis and can damage the platelet and cause platelet dysfunction as well. Helium is rapidly pumped into and out of the balloon about 40 cc's. When inflated, this balloon displaces the blood that is in the aorta. This is known as counterpulsation. Helium is used because it is a soluble gas and will not cause an embolus if balloon ruptures. This sudden inflation moves the blood superiorly and inferiorly into the balloon. When the balloon is suddenly deflated, the pressure within the aorta drops quick, quickly. Inflation of the balloon occurs at the onset of diastole. At that point, the maximum aortic blood volume is available for displacement because the left ventricle has just finished contracting and beginning to relax. The aortic valve is closed and the blood has not had an opportunity to flow system, uh, systemically. The pressure wave that is created by the inflation uh, forces the blood superiorly into the coronary arteries. This helps perfuse the heart. Blood is also forced inferiorly, increasing the perfusion of the distal organ like brain, kidney, and tissues. Balloon remains inflated throughout the diastole at the onset of systole, the balloon is rapidly deflated. The sudden loss of aortic pressure caused by the deflation reduces the afterload. The ventricle does not have to generate as much pressure to achieve rejection since the blood has been forced from the aorta. The lower ejection pressure reduces the amount of work the heart has to do, resulting in a lower myocardial oxygen demand. As you can see, the inflation and deflation timing is critical in order to obtain the maximum benefits from the pump. 
Incorrect timing can result in poor patient outcomes. During a cardiac arrest, the intraaortic balloon pump can provide a very effective perfusion in conjunction with ex extra uh, external compressions. Since there is no ECG signal and no arterial pressure wave to trigger the pump on the internal trigger is selected. The trigger detects uh, the flow of blood caused by compression and inflates the balloon providing the circulation. Good consistent compressions are a must for this uh, to work. Use of the autopulse in these situations has not been studied. Thank you.